those big punches, roll under them, and come back with power, making sure that Clockler's not able to continue to push the pace. Keep it whatever Adams wants to fight, and that's his key to victory. Now listen, there's some people out there that like to put a little money on this thing. Go to betonline.ag and get a little action. What are the odds looking like here for the main event? Very interested in my opinion. Very even is this fight. Minus 115, minus 115. That means you have to bet $115 to win 100. Both guys are even. This is a coin toss. The people who make the odds don't know who's going to win. Most people don't know who's going to win. It's all about the fight. I'm excited for this one. Well, listen, these fight fans in O-Town are ready for some action. So let's get it started. It's the Crescent Tools Tale of the Tape. We will begin in the featherweight division, 145 pounders, Travis Floyd versus Roberto Armas. Looks here, Travis Floyd has a four inch height advantage, two inch reach advantage. Not too big of a reach, but he's gonna wanna continue to keep Roberto Armas at bay, keep him getting hit every time he comes in. Pop that jab, make sure that Roberto pays every time he tries to get close. This is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship and indeed pro combat sports debut for Roberto Armas. He has had nine AMI MMA bouts, also had eight AMI kickboxing bouts. In our fighter meeting, Armas said, slips into the pocket. He said, I pride myself on having a very high fight IQ. High fight IQ, but at the same time, being very aggressive. He said he's a pocket fighter, likes to come up with hooks, uppercuts, overhands. Wants to go out there and feel out the fight at the beginning, but he's also waiting, wants to be the person who gets off that first punch. Armas also told us, I think I will break Travis Floyd mentally before I break him physically. I'll break him mentally because I will keep frustrating him. That's true, he feels like this is a sport for him. He feels like he was built for it. His key is to go out and have fun, and once again, be the first one to get off. The BKFC debut for Travis Floyd. He has fought five times as a pro in mixed martial arts, played basketball at the NCAA Division II level at Morehouse College. Floyd used the word slick. He said, I'm a very slick puncher. Very slick, but the thing that his coach talked about was his unbelievable work ethic drive, talked about how great his cardio is, said he definitely wants to stay long in this fight because he has a little bit of a reach advantage. Chris Floyd in our fighter meeting also talked about ring generalship. He said, I want to showcase that ring generalship, my movement, my slickness. He said, I feel though above all else, proper punch selection and accuracy are my keys to victory. Those were, but not letting the other guy dictate the range and pace was huge for him too. To get us started, we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the magnificent Carib Royale here in beautiful Orlando, Florida. And welcome to BKFC 25 as we kick things off with our free view, starting with five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division, presented to you by Onnit. Total Human Optimization. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears white and black. He stands five feet four inches tall. His official weight, 144.6 pounds. Tonight he makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Charleston, South Carolina, by way of San Benito, Texas. Here is Roberto El Gallo Negro. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and gold. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall. His official weight, 145.9 pounds. He holds an MMA record of five fights and tonight makes his bare-knuckle debut. Fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia, here is Travis Floyd. And our referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. This and all bouts tonight are scheduled for five two-minute rounds. They are scored by three judges who are assigned by the Florida Athletic Commission on the 10-point must system. Right. Both fighters up to scratch. 
Round number one. Black and gold trunks for Travis Floyd. Blue and gray trunks for Roberto Armas. And Floyd has really changed up the stance. Now. He's going southpaw back to right hand and back and forth. Lead left hook, just missing for Armas behind the high tight striking guard. There's the short overhand right. Armas now coming forward. You see that slickness. Quick counter on the left hand from Travis Floyd. Man. Good left hand lands from Armas. That slowed down Floyd. Armas has just come up throwing bombs the entire time. Very. Very aggressive. He was right when he said he was, but he's got to be careful. He's opened himself up for counters. There's that left hand again from Armas. Backs off Floyd. Floyd trying to get the bounce back in his step. Firing back. There's an overhand right though that lands from Armas. Armas landing the big counters to the clinch. I mean, I know Armas talks about his aggressive style. He wants to come in and do exactly what he's talking about right now. But man, you cannot do this too long in the sport. You're going to get countered and knocked out eventually. Flick jab, rear right uppercut. That's into the armpit from Travis Floyd. The blood on the nose of Roberto Armas. And especially with that knuckle. Here. If you hit him, I don't care where it is. If it's in the arm, the armpit, the shoulder, anywhere, you're going to do damage. Eventually, that wears you down. Floyd keeping his hands very low, showing his confidence in movement. You see those big swings. The overhand right misses from Armas, but still coming forward. Counter left from Floyd. 40 seconds remaining round number one. Kind of pairs the pace. Armas is slowing down a little bit already. He's throwing bombs. Man, those tire you out. Big swings again into the pocket from Floyd, landing mostly on the arms of Armas. Roberto Armas still coming forward. You see the playfulness in the hands of Floyd. Snap jab from Travis Floyd. More big swings. 20 seconds remaining, round number one. Armas comes forward again with pressure. Man, but Armas' space is starting to look like a wreck. He's going to have to be careful and slow down this pace a little bit, not continue just to go punch him. 10 seconds to me. He's for the bell. See the combinations landing from Floyd. The big swings continuing to come from Roberto Armas. Counter on the left hand from Floyd. Right hand again from Travis Floyd. The bell, the end of a very entertaining round number one. Man, that was a. a Man, a feverish pace right there set by Roberto Armas, but in doing so, he takes a lot of damage right there. The thing was, Travis Boyd's hands were in bad position, but he's so slick he could get by with that. They weren't up. It didn't matter, though. He was moving out the way, avoid, and throwing good counter punches. I'd like to see how Roberto Armas is going to adjust right there. I know he likes being aggressive, but he cannot just walk forward and throw bombs. You're going to have to work your way in with head movement. Just come in behind the jab, something. You cannot just throw hard punches at Travis Ford, because when you miss, he comes back with counters, and then you're in trouble. Take it out. Set for round number two of this bout in the featherweight division. Both Let's fighters making their respective BKFC debut. Let's Travis go. Floyd versus Let's Roberto go. Armas. Knuckle up. Call of knuckle up from referee Chris Young. Right back to work for Travis Floyd. Coming forward with the pressure and back to work with this footwork as well for Floyd. Switches stances. Armas continuing to try to land big snap jab from Floyd. Snap jab right back from Armas. Oh, yeah. The fighters giving and receiving here in round number one. And I tell you, that uppercut has been a huge weapon for Travis Floyd. Armas is ducking that head in sometimes when he's coming forward. Getting that foot, and that nose right over the foot right there. And that's dangerous when you get that uppercut. See Armas stabbing at the blood on his nose. He's cut on the bridge of his nose. Also swelling under both eyes. You see Floyd's face relatively clean, despite the fact he took some big clean shots from Armas in round number one. Big swings there from both men. Floyd almost in the Philly shell, hard front shoulder. Overhand right, there's the left hook from Armas. Armas is in some good punches right now, but he's got to be careful. He's opening himself up to these counters right now. Good short shovel left hand from Floyd. Snap jab from Floyd. Overhand right, overhand right again. First partially missed, second definitely missed for Marvis. Time! Mouthpiece out, time called Mouthpiece. immediately by Chris Young. Inadvertently spat out by Travis Floyd. Right back in. Into the pocket comes Armis. There's the body shots with the right hand by Floyd. Call a break from Chris Young. Right back to it. He's keeping this 145 pound bout moving. Three punch combination from Floyd. Jab from Armis. There's a good snap jab from Floyd. Sometimes fighters, Chris, will tell us they're slick and they're not. Floyd is definitely <laughs> slick. Not only is he slick, but he looks very relaxed out there. Every punch that's being thrown is just barely missing. 
Double jab from Floyd. Closing stages, oh. round number two. There is the bell. Next stop, round number three. And that just shows you the confidence that Travis Floyd has right there. When he's able to keep the hands down, just barely move out of the way. That's from hours and hours and hours of sparring practice. You just I see what's coming. You can avoid it without really having to do too much. At the top of the hour, our main card begins. KFC 25 from Three Royale in Orlando, Florida. Main evented by the fight for the BKFC heavyweight strap. The champion Arnold AJ Adams versus Dylan Kleckler. Roberto Armas was able to land some good punches in that round. I'm not sure if it was enough to win him the round, but he's going to have to continue to do that. He wants to come in behind the jab, more, a little bit more head movement. And when he gets Travis Floyd backing up, he's got to push him against some foots or on the ropes, I should say. Just continue to unload punches. Get him a total line. In close rounds, it's the same for MMA, the same for boxing. Some judges like the forward pressure, some like the slick movement. That's What's largely what we've fingers? had here, the slip okay. movement belonging to Floyd, the forward pressure belonging to Armas, but again, both fighters have landed significant punches. There's a significant overhand right by Armas, didn't fully turn it over, though. Snap jab from Floyd. Jab right back from Armas. Again, Armas waiting forward, missing with that right hook. To the body, good three-punch combination from Floyd. And that's another good thing, that you throw those overhands and you throw those hooks and you miss. Turn those under the body sometimes, it's hard to... Hard to avoid those punches. You can always duck under a punch with your head, but you can't move your body out the way. To the clinch, almost the playfulness from Floyd now. Hands getting lower and lower, and I think that's through confidence, not fatigue. Floyd continuing this circle on the outside. And he's a very good athlete, played Division II college basketball at Morehouse College. Look, look. At five foot eight, as you ask very tongue in cheek, Chris, were you a center? <laughs> The answer was no, it was a point grab. Now you I think he got the joke. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Rear right uppercut from Floyd. Okay, those have been the most effective punches right there. The Floyd's able to land those uppercuts, not only to the head, but to the body. See that big overhand right again for Armas. Even when he misses, it does take Floyd off his striking line. Again, forward pressure. See the blood all over the face of Armas still coming forward. 30 seconds remaining, round number three. This is a very close, intriguing fight. I love what Clemens Floyd did there was uh, dig that uppercut to the body. Beautiful. Snap jab from Ormus. Floyd, you see the confidence. Switching stances. Southpaw back to Ortho. Good left hand. Clubbing on the turn from Travis Floyd. 10 seconds, Jimmy. Listen for the bell. Jab again with the right hand. Switch stances. Jab with the left hand from Floyd. Slick indeed. The bell. We will move to round four. Close fight, Chris. Absolutely, and like you said, Chuck, you never really know how these judges are scoring. If they, they like pressure, if they like aggressiveness. You know, I, I like it when we have the open score. We can see that. The live score, we can see exactly what they're thinking, and then you can adjust. Oh, the fight is over. Referee Chris Young you indicating this fight is fight's over. over. You fight, over. Yeah, Not sure exactly what happened, was it? Rick, Rick, we're retired. Armis is done on his stool. We don't Rick, know if that's a fight of retirement, a corner stoppage, or that's a medical stoppage. What we do know is that Travis Floyd now victorious in his BKFC debut. You see Dr. Don Muzi there with the glasses. He is the chief medical officer for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. I believe we're going to have Rick, a medical Rick, stoppage Rick, TKO. TKO. Retirement, my retirement, yes. Hard fought, well fought, very entertaining between Travis Floyd and Roberto Armas. Full credit to both fighters. I do not believe that Armas retired on his stool again. I think we will find this will be a position stoppage. It's corner stoppage. Yeah, corner stoppage. That was very entertaining. Both guys were able to come in and do what they wanted. Just Styles makes fights and we knew Armas was going to come in and throw bombs. We knew Floyd was going to try and be slick. Both guys were able to execute their plan. Slickness won out today. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, the red corner calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number three for your winner by TKO, Travis Floyd.
What a fantastic start for Travis Floyd to his bare knuckle career. Came in and looked very slick, very confident. Threw, thrown many punches and landed exactly where he wanted. Good placement. Looked fantastic tonight, Sean. The official announcement from Jeff Houston calling it not a fighter retirement, but a corner stoppage. So Armis's corner getting him out of the fight. But again, Roberto Armas doing some good things in his Pro Combat Sports debut, and Travis Floyd doing some excellent things in his BKFC debut. The winner, by way of third round TKO, Travis Floyd defeats Roberto Armas. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare-knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on Bare Knuckle TV. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content uncut and uncensored all here anytime you want anywhere you want for only $4.99 a month subscribe now exclusively at bkfc.com bare knuckle fighting championship brought to you by crescent tools odd socks betonline.ag and shed a token. And now let's go to your Crescent Tools Tale of the Tape. The numbers for this cruiserweight bout, Idris Wasi versus John McAllister. Sean, this is where we have uh, another interesting one where Idris has two inch height advantage, yet a two inch disadvantage in the reach. I think the reach is more Important, John McAllister is going to want to continue to sit back and wait. Make sure he pops his opponent in the face every time he tries to step forward. John McAllister set for bout number six in his bare knuckle career and bout number four in BKFC. He's also a veteran of one pro boxing bout, one pro MMA match. McAllister told us in our fighter meeting that previously in bare knuckle, no matter how he's done in the first round, win or lose, he's felt a sense of panic come in on the stool. He said, I have to overcome that, stay calm, build on what I'm doing in the first round, continue to relax, continue to have fun. Well, he said he definitely had to get his mind right after his first few fights. Had to get in there and change things up. He realized one thing he wants to do is close that gap, come behind the double jab, get it in the clinch if he can do so. McAllister said of his opponent in his cruiserweight bout, Idris Wasi, he is cocky, and he used that word cocky. He said, I'm going to apply forward pressure. He will not react well. This is the BKFC debut for Idris Wasi. He has fought 21 times in his pro MMA career, including once in Bellator. He's also had four pro boxing bouts. And Chris, he gave us the quote of the week, if not the year, in our fighter meetings. Wasi said, I'm a brawler. To me, technique is boring. <laughs> well, I got like the honesty. Well, not only that, but we got the rarity when we said, where do you feel like you're better than your opponent? He said, he's better everywhere. We got all like that confidence that he has going in there. Wasi also said of John McAllister, he has power, but he does not know how to use that power properly. And I think he reacts very poorly when he's hit hard. Yeah, he said he, the one thing he does have to watch out for is that wild overhand right that his opponent throws. He says if he does have power and if he lands that, it could hurt him. He's going to try to avoid that at all costs. Back we go to Jeff Houston. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight of the night is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the Cruiserweight division. Presented to you by Cheddar Token. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue red corner. Tonight he wears blue and white. He stands five feet nine inches tall. His official weight, 203.7 pounds. Tonight he steps into the squared circle for his seventh bare knuckle fight. Fighting out of Fallensby, West Virginia, here is John the Great One, McAllister. And across the ring, his opponent fighting up the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed in blue and gray. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 206 and one half pounds. He is a combined combat sports veteran of 25 fights. And tonight, makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Sacramento, California. Here is Idris Wasi. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Idris Wasi did say at our fighter meeting, I'm really not sure how I'm going to be able to react and how I will deal with getting punched with a bare knuckle. I'm about to find out. I'm intrigued on how my body and my mind will react. Round number one. Black, gray, and blue trunks for Idris Wasi. Blue and white trunks for John McAllister. Very measured start for both fighters, both high tight striking guard looking to establish the jab. There's the lead left hook from Wasi off of the McAllister jab. You can tell both guys respect the other one's power. See the feints from McAllister. Wasi, very little movement, holding still in center circle. Jab in the right hand. Combination right back out. McAllister doing well, defending that with the high tight striking guard. Jab from John McAllister, not all the way through. 40 seconds gone, round number one. I feel like Washington too big up and not wasting any energy right now. The left hook, right hand. McAllister in, right back out. Jab again from John McAllister. Wasi's looking just to wait to counter. As soon as McAllister comes in, he continues to play that left hook. McAllister off the one-two. Counter left hand. McAllister now into the pocket and into the clinch. Break. An activity calls the break from referee Andrew Knuckle. Glenn. Right back to it. McAllister missing with that right hand. Wasi looking cool as you like in his bare knuckle debut. Limited movement. You see not breaking eye contact. Wasi with a short overhand right. McAllister resetting. And I like what Wasi did there. He threw a right hand to the body. If he can turn those under to uppercuts or just those hooks to the body, it's going to pay dividends. McAllister looking for the entry. There's the counter, and down goes John McAllister. The count of 10 reached by Andrew Glenn. Welcome to BKFC, Idris Wasi, win number one. He looked very good out there, waiting for the time when he needed to do a lot of power out there the entire time, but he just didn't waste any extra energy, Sean. He wasn't bouncing around too much. He wasn't moving his head. He was just waiting for the right time. He knew his opponent was coming with. He was waiting for that count. That's exactly what happened. When we were talking in our commentary, Chris, about the stillness of Wasi, it was meant as a compliment. He was setting his feet and landing. He's waiting for the right time, and then, look, he's even getting hit. He still has power when he pushes. Wow. You can just see the look of deflation right now in the look of McAllister. Just trying to get up, just doesn't have it in him right now. Just that little. Shot to the head, knocked McAllister sideways, and that was it. All it takes is a little bit. You can turn to see the head turn, that chin turn, anything like that. Knocks your balance off, your equilibrium's gone. You just don't know where exactly where you're at. And that's like exactly what happened to McAllister. McAllister told us, I cannot allow Wasi to set up and hold distance. I have to get inside. I have to use my, utilize my dirty boxing. And at the end of the fight, it was McAllister coming in aggressively, and he was caught, dropped, and finished. Yeah. We go to Jeff Houston. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 59 seconds into round number one for your winner by KO Idris Wazee. Great start for Wazi. His career here looked fantastic out there. Nice and relaxed, calm, cool, collective. Can't wait to see him in here fighting again. John McAllister determined, fought aggressively, landed his shots, but ultimately Idris Wasi seeing himself through to victory and doing so with something he described as boring technique. Good technique from Idris Wasi. The winner by way of first round knockout, Idris Wasi defeats John McAllister. Updates, news, and more. It's the all-new BKFC app coming soon. Chris, we're here in Orlando, Florida. His Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship continues to roll a total of five shows over four weeks. Tomorrow, somehow you and I are in Thailand. I think it's called a remote, but we will be bringing you full commentary of BKFC Thailand, too. And then next week, we'll actually be there, Omaha, Nebraska. For me, the most underrated fight city in the United States. It will be packed in Omaha. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship again will conclude this phenomenal run of four consecutive weeks with five events. A great card tonight, an outstanding main event as we look forward to seeing a fight for the BKFC Heavyweight World Championship. The titleist Arnold A.J. Adams versus Dylan Kleckler. What a fantastic fight. We talked about a clash in styles, a clash in just exactly the way they do everything. A knockout puncher versus, I mean, AJ Adams, he, he does not mind going the distance. He feels like he likes to go the distance. He wants to showcase his skills. He worked hard for this. He wants to be out there the entire time showcasing with us. Kluckler, not so much. He's never been the distance. He doesn't want to go the distance. All he wants to go out there, hit you with those hard punches to put you down. So a contrasting in style right there. I think whoever's able to set the pace is going to have the best chance to win this fight. Our co-main event, this is a very intriguing bout. Now, it's set at 185 pounds. They've actually done a contractual catch of 180 pounds. Julian Lane versus Dave Mundell. Dave Mundell, we last saw him in December in BKFC. He was dropped in round number one by Stanislav Grosu, coming back to win a unanimous decision. Julian Lane coming off of back-to-back -to -back phenomenal performances in defeat, and it's not often we would say that. Losing to David Rickles by way of unanimous decision last October in Wichita, Kansas, and then in February at Knuckle Mania 2 here in the state of Florida, losing by way of unanimous decision versus Julian Lane. If there's any solace in defeat, it's that Lane fought really well in both bouts. I mean, not only did he fight well, but this guy's always fighting the toughest guy on the card. He's always in contention for fight of the night. I mean, this guy just comes, his name says it all, let me bang, bro. He wants to come in there and put on a show for the fans. And that's when he comes in, win, lose, or draw, he's going to come in and try and knock your head off. He's going to be there putting on entertaining fights, standing there in front of the other person. It makes it a lot of fun to watch. That's why he's always a fan favorite, and he's always going to have a home here if he continues to come and fight like that, Sean. You're with us for our worldwide preview, BKFC 25. At the top of the hour, our main card begins. You can watch it live worldwide on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Set now for our third and final prelim on this BKFC 25 preview in the Bantamweight division. Ryan Reber versus Micah Mitchell. The numbers presented by Crescent Tools. And Sean, if you look here, almost no difference. One inch reach, one inch height, that does not make a big difference. This is going to be about who's going to go out there, execute their bank game plan. They're going to get the victory. Not about who's got the better reach or the better height, any of that. That doesn't matter here. This is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut for Micah Mitchell. It's also his pro combat sports debut. 
who does have seven, seven AMI MMA bouts, 11 amateur kickboxing bouts. Mitchell told us in our fighter meeting, I'm very aggressive. I have the ability to take punches well and keep coming forward. Said he wants to double up on the jab. He feels like the best game plan for him, push his opponent against the ropes, work the body. He's seen that in the past. He's been studying the game. He knows exactly body punches work very well in bare knuckles. So 18 combined AMI combat sports bouts for Micah Mitchell. Seven in MMA, 11 in kickboxing. Mitchell told us proudly, I have never been knocked down in my career. I'm very impressed with that. It feels like he has a lot of experience that will help it, as well as his high fight IQ. This is the BKFC and indeed Pro Combat Sports debut for Ryan Reber. Also experiences an AMI combat sports athlete, 12 amateur boxing bouts, two AMI MMA bouts, two amateur kickboxing fights. Reber said, I want to utilize very accurate counter punching, constant fakes, and into straight punches. That was his key, straight punches. Talked a lot about feints. Feels like he trains for any situation, so. No matter what happens, he feels like he's going to be able to adapt out there. Ryan Reber said of Micah Mitchell, his opponent in his bantamweight bout, he really lacks power. He essentially throws arm punches. I want to be evasive from the outside and then start to establish my clean boxing from range. He wants to stay composed, stay long, use his box. He feels like he has superior boxer to his opponent. He wants to come out here and showcase that today. Reber also said, I've got to keep that hit and don't get hit mindset. We don't always hear that from fighters, especially those making their BKFC debut in our fighter meeting. So often fighters say, I want to stand and trade. Reber talked about being elusive, being smart defensively. Sean, it's amazing how many of the fighters tell us that the first time. And the second time, they go, you can't get hit. We go, yeah, yeah, we know. We <laughs> it's always funny when we hear him say that. I love it. Again, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Presented to you by betonline.ag. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears blue trimmed in black and white. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, his official weight 132.2 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare knuckle debut, fighting out of Seattle, Washington. Here is Micah I-5 Mitchell. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and black. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, his official weight 134.1 pounds. Tonight he also makes his bare knuckle debut, fighting out of Clearwater, Florida, by way of New London, Connecticut. Here is Royal Ryan Reaver. And a referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. As Ryan Reber talked to us about being evasive from the outside, Micah Mitchell talked to us about getting to right, the Jones, inside, landing line. heavy body up, shots. Buckle up. Round number one. Fast start off of the scratch line from Micah Mitchell. He's in the blue trunks, white and black trunks for Ryan Reber. Immediate forward pressure from Micah Mitchell. Reaper trying to establish that outside distance, but exactly where he wants to be now is Micah Mitchell, and there are those big aforementioned body shots. Man, those are nice. More body shots, active wow. clinch. Work, work, That's work. why referee Dan Mergliata allowing this All to right, continue. Break, separate. Now Hands the separation guys, from Mergliata. He's set in the center circle. Good start to round number one for Micah Mitchell. Modified jab, almost a lead left hook from Ryan Reber, and back into the pocket, back to the body goes Micah Mitchell. Mitchell doing exactly what he said he was going to, work his way in and continue to work the body. Counter on the right hand, big shots down to the head, counter right hand from Reber. Difference here, I feel like you can tell right away, Mitchell doesn't have quite the power that Reber has. He's gonna have to make up for that in volume. Off the jab, wide hook to the body, didn't fully land from Mitchell. Reaper's taken a lot of body shots, but he's taken them very well. 
45 seconds remaining round number one off the one two from Ryan Reber. There's the jab from Mitchell. Really just a range finder jab. Just taking Reber's ever so slightly off his striking line. Mitchell just waiting for the right time to do that blitz where he continues to come forward with a lot of punches, pushing the opponent back. Now 25 seconds remaining in the opening round of this bantamweight bout. Got a lot of power on that jab from Micah Mitchell. Overhand left. There's a big overhand right from Mitchell that misses the mark. A gang coming forward. Micah Mitchell looking to go to the body. Counter to the head from Reber with the right hand. And I like right now how Mitchell's trying to get in close. That takes away some of the power that Reber has. Right that is the end of round one. Very interesting right there. Once again, we have volume and pressure right there versus powerful strike. So it'd be great to see what the judges thought about that round. I'm not sure. Very tough to call right there. I think the good news is we both see what each fighter needs to do. Micah Mitchell needs to continue to push the pace, get inside. He doesn't want to sit on the outside. He does not have the power to deal with people right there. Modern combat sports judging, be it John McCarthy in an MMA course, someone like Jack Reese or Tim Cheatham in a boxing course, they're going to emphasize powerful shots to clean targets over volume. In essence, one hard shot defeats 20 very soft shots. Yeah, that is you know, the, the consensus, but that's not always how it's judged, Sean. So I know it sounds good in theory, but I've seen many times when that's not the case. Well, you have to attend that course to buy the <laughs> theory, <laughs> yeah. because the old school approach, and not that old school, but 80s, 90s, okay, early 2000s, okay. puts You're the right. emphasis on the volume. Okay. Set for round number two. Okay, total line, gentlemen, total line. First up to scratch is Ryan ready, Reber. Ready? Knuckle up. Oh, knuckle up from Dan Mergliata. The scratch line with the double jab Ready is Micah Mitchell. Ryan. There's the right hand now. Walk down pressure from Reber, then the turn. Back to the inside, back to the body, and a counter right hand from Reber as Mitchell was throwing to the body. Into right, the clinch, no overhook strikes, no held strikes. by Reber. There's the separation from Rodriguez. You can tell Reber right ready? now, he's kind of Buckle stepped up. it up a little bit. He's trying to turn on the gas a little bit. There's that long range jab again from Micah Mitchell off target. Much more Ryan. muted in round two than we saw in round number one from Micah Mitchell. He's got to push his opponent backwards right now. He cannot continue to sit in front of Reber. He's going to, in, in, out, in a firefight right there, he's going to lose in his back. Reber starting the time that entry jab from Micah Mitchell, pulling out of distance. And again, Reber said he wanted a long range fight, and Mitchell said he wanted this inside on, and throw it to the on, body. Right, really break, too much power go. right there. Turn around, Michael. Ready? Total turn around, right turn there. around. Well, we're talking about up. in a judging seminar. You are you looking up. at the volume? Or are you looking at the power? Absolutely. I think I'm in agreement. Whoever's doing the most damage is winning the fight. If you're right. Slap parry from Mitchell. Now left hand from through. Reber. 35 seconds remaining. Round number two. All right, think pad work. Think pad work. Mitchell again, Ryan. trying to get off with a jab from the southpaw stance through a naked left hand there. Be the first Smear of blood under the left eye of Micah Mitchell. Go, come down low now, come back up high. Reaper ever so slightly turning up the temperature Ryan. here in round number two. And I mean ever so slightly. He's really subtle with the movement. He started off very good at the beginning of the round. He kind of slowed down as the fight went on. Good right hand now, the left hand from Reaper. That circles out Mitchell. Best sequence of the fight for Reaver. Reaver to the inside. Oh, that's right. And that is the end of round number two. <laughs> and Mitchell just stopped and looked around when his mouthpiece got knocked yeah, down. He was like, thought they were, they were gonna stop or something. Now you gotta keep fighting. Wait till they, there's a break in the action. They're gonna give you the mouthpiece. Like you can, uh, the and fight. we are done. That is a corner stoppage. Mitchell's corner says that's the end of the fight and the win for Ryan Reaver. He said no more, he just quit. He reacted very strange. Did Mitchell, after he got hit, after he got his mouthpiece knocked out, he just kind of sat there and looked like, what's going on here? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if his jaw got hurt or what exactly happened right there, but you could tell he had a look of confusion on his face. Just that one punch knocked the mouthpiece out. And look, he just kind of sits there and looks at the mouthpiece like, oh, we're still fighting? Yeah, we're still fighting, my friend. 
And that's fair game from Ryan Reber. He did uh, absolutely nothing wrong. Now look at the corner. The, first round, but the indication of Dan Mergliotta that we are through. And I didn't see the cornerman say anything. I wonder if Mitchell just said, I, this, this isn't for me, I'm done. Micah Mitchell had a really good start to that fight, Chris. He solved the distance of Reber. He got to the inside as he told us he wanted to. He threw to the body as he told us he wanted to. Reber, to his credit, took those punches, found his range, and ultimately gets the victory. It looked to me just to be a difference of just overall size and strength. I felt like Reba was just a bigger, stronger guy. You could tell that immediately when you saw these two guys. And I think that was the main difference. Mitchell did some good things at the beginning, but he just didn't have the power or the size or the ability to get in there. And, and he got in a firefight. He just couldn't deal with the, the results. Let's go! Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, the red corner calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number two for your winner by TKO, Royal Ryan Reber. Nice job by Reber continuing just to let the fight come to him, waited for the right time, waited for his opportunity, exploded when he had to, got the victory. Not without adversity, but indeed in combat sports, as in life, adversity builds character. Ryan Reber holding off from a fast start from Micah Mitchell in those big body shots. Season control in round number two, and then getting the TKO as Mitchell's corner ends the fight before the third round. The winner by way of second round TKO, Ryan Reber defeats Micah Mitchell. Kareem Royale in Orlando, Florida, our site for BKFC 25. So three up, three down for our prelims. That's our free view. We welcome all of you watching live worldwide online. At the top of the hour, our main card begins. You can see it live on the Bare Knuckle TV app. A very intriguing bout. Coming from the world of kayfabe, professional <laughs> wrestling from the WWE, Jack Claffey versus Rick Caruso. Rick Caruso, second fight in bare knuckle, stepping in on very late notice when we told him, and we have no bias towards who wins or who loses, it doesn't matter to us, but we said that's a real fighter stepping up week up. Jack Claffey in our fighter meeting, it was like talking to a fellow <laughs> fight nerd. He is a huge historian, and I mean that lovingly. He had me at Volcon and Archie Moore. He said, I've been studying stances, styles, old fighters, new fighters. He is fully dedicated to making a run in bare knuckle. This is not a stunt from a former professional wrestler. Yeah, he, just what you said, I was very impressed when he started talking about angles and having the you know, footwork. I don't want to be on the back of my heel right here with this shoulder pointed. Well, I was like, oh my God, this is the most detailed thing we've heard about. How have you changed your stance? I mean, he went into like really minute details right there. He's really been taking this serious. Something he felt like he, he had to do if he wants to be in this spot. And he's here now, so he's really taking it serious. I can't wait to see what he has out there. This is a little different coming from a pro wrestling, but if anybody is that dedicated, I think they have a good chance. That bout at 145 pounds, our co-main set at 185 pounds, Dave Mundell versus Julian Lane. This is a very intriguing fight. Absolutely, they both fight very different styles. Right down my own tail, and he's very measured, knows exactly where he wants to be, very calm, very relaxed. I mean, he could very easily be undefeated in this organization. He had a very close fight versus Hector Lombard. A lot of people thought he won that, didn't, but you know, he's very good at what he's trying to do. So, and we know what Julian Lane does. Julian Lane's gonna come with bombs all the time. So our main card set to begin top of the hour again. Nine fights headed your way. You can watch it live worldwide on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Cyrus, so glad that you're back with us for BKFC 25. Oh, 100% guys. What an incredible night here at Carib Royale. We got crazy fans here in O-Town and they are ready. Now check it out. You got to get on the app. It's very, very simple. Bare Knuckle TV, in fact, you can scan it right here. You see where I'm looking? Scan that right there. Get the fight, $4.99. You get tonight, you get tomorrow in Thailand, you get Omaha a week from now. You get all of our events in the past. It's all the bare knuckle you could possibly ask for. And it's all about to go down. Main card coming up next here in just 10 minutes time. That incredible main card. And then of course, fight night Omaha coming up very very soon as well that is coming up on the 13th in omaha nebraska 
Beck Rollins, it's going to be an incredible night of fights. Dakota Cochran there in the main event. You don't want to miss it. Omaha will be rocking just like Orlando. Everywhere we go, the fans are so thirsty for violence. They absolutely love it. And all you have to do is grab the app right now. $4.99. Get it on any of your app stores. It's there, and you're going to get all the action tonight. And tomorrow in Thailand. Don't forget about Thailand because they throw down serious. It's our second Thailand event. You'll be able to check that out as well as all of tonight's festivities, including that incredible heavyweight championship bout with Arnold Adams and Dylan Kleckler. Julian, let me bang Lane. I mean, we just heard Sean and Chris talk about it, but I'm going to keep drilling it into your skull. You don't want to miss it. It's 4 dollars It's less than a value meal now. And you get all that bare knuckle action, all the knuckle sandwiches you could possibly want. So check it out. Get it scanned and be a part of it. Remember, Omaha is next up. Let's take a look. I try to keep that forward pressure. A lot of guys will fight me. Josh D. Big shots again. The upper hand. Andrew Glenn may stop this, and he does. Game set match. Josh Dodd. The assassin. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, any time you want, instantly, on most streaming devices. It's available right now on Bare Knuckle TV. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $4.99 a month. Subscribe now, exclusively, at BKFC.com.